Welcome to the Creative Brew, helping you keep your creative juices brewing. We're giving out chunks of insight, motivation, and practicality for your creative journey. This is a new episode of the Creative Brew. We're always giving out creative tips, always interviewing interviewing uh, interesting people, uh, interesting creative people. And what are you doing um, with me? Interesting characters. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> in the in the uh, local community, and uh, like I said, I'm personally I, I'm a, a big uh, comic book geek, uh, sci-fi geek. So that's why we are recording at Panels Comic Book and Coffee Bar. Um, great coffee, great titles, uh, great snacks. Please come on by. They've got different specials going on. Uh, please check them out. They're off of Mission Avenue, uh, right near the pier. Um, great scenery, great atmosphere. Uh, so please come on by, check them out, and support local businesses. Uh, today we've got uh, Matt Dunford uh, with uh, the uh, San Diego Comic Fest, and he's also uh, a, a great uh, fixture in the. Uh, uh, from what I've learned, uh, the, the thriving uh, comic book industry um, here, or well, actually comic book community here in San Diego, and uh, he's a, a, a fixture in that. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> because somehow I show up everywhere. I mean, if you're a comic <laughs> geek in this town, you've probably seen me. So I'm, I'm one, someone once said that if you're doing a geeky event in Southern California, if Matt Dunford isn't there, then it's not worth going to. So, like, you're in the right place right now. Yep. But uh, we're going to talk about San Diego Comic Fest, which is the place that I want and hope that all of you guys will go to. So we're coming up next month. So that's March 7th to the 10th. San Diego Comic Fest is the small, intimate comic convention experience. And you'll say like, well, don't you mean Comic Con? No, no, Comic Fest. <laughs> However, San Diego Comic Fest is actually started by the founding fathers of San Diego Comic Con yeah. to bring it back to that intimate root culture that what it was in the 1970s. So, of course, when they started San Diego Comic Con, they never expected it to blow up into the event of like 200,000 people. And some of the guys from the older generation, when they reunited for the 40th anniversary of Comic Con 10 years ago, they said, you know what, it's really big now and it's cool, but we kind of miss the old days. Yeah. What if we were to put together a convention experience where you had all these legendary creators, but in an intimate atmosphere? And so the result was San Diego Comic Fest, which was born in 2012 and now we are getting we are gearing up for the seventh year of it nice nice and i, I personally uh, went went to that last year uh great event um and, it, and it's intimate and it's one of those to where you're able that got a, they had a, a lot of great panels uh great workshops I, I went to i think i went to all the workshops took notes um so it was i mean besides you know going there obviously you want to go in there for the for the comics and and see certain artists and and uh, things like that, you you also get a, a chance to you know work on your craft. You know they got workshops there that uh, know that you know helps you to work uh, work on new techniques and uh, new skills um, that that can help your help any creative career. So I believe a lot of people should go to, especially if they're in the area. Uh, definitely uh, go to the San Diego, uh, San Diego Comic Fest uh, that's going to be here in March. Um, so. I, and, I, I'll, and I'll ask you that question too. What What do you feel as far as you know? Because there's there's a lot of comic cons mm -hmm. all throughout the coast. You know, it's the season's about to you know it's kicking up now. Um, what What makes the San Diego Comic Fest uh, just different from from all the other ones? Well, I think the fact it's just it's operated by fans for fans for the community yeah. with with just a you know, personal effect to it. And the fact that we are trying to make sure that everybody has fun. Yeah. We're not, you know, in this for, you know, profit-driven reasons. We are doing this to actually make sure that people have a good time mm -hmm. and that there is something for everyone. Now, I love San Diego Comic-Con. I've been going for 25 years. But I understand that the experience is not for everyone. Yeah. I've, you know, been going since I was eight years old. And so I've grown up with the San Diego Comic-Con experience. <laughs> but if you're going to San Diego Comic-Con for the first time, you're going to be like, oh, there's too much to do. There's too much. To... Yeah. I think that's a cool thing, but it does get overwhelming for some people. And mm -hmm. of course, I have nothing but love for San Diego Comic Con. But if you're looking to get into the convention experience, you might want to dip your toes into something yeah. a little, a little more shallow before <laughs> yeah. jump plowing into the deep end. <laughs> so San Diego Comic Fest provides that kind of environment where you can meet other fans, mm -hmm. but you can still meet these legendary creators. And I think one of the coolest things is just when you're just you know, bumping around in the hallway or grabbing a cup of coffee with some of these like icons of animation in the industry. Um, it's just really cool. Rather than 
the other opportunities at bigger conventions, which might be like, you'd go in front of a, into a panel and get up on a microphone in front yeah. of a thousand people. It's like, excuse me, I, I loved your work and it was, like, it's like, that puts a lot of pressure on some people. Oh yeah, yeah. But when you're just going up and just casually talking to them, yeah, it really takes the edge off because yeah. the coolest thing about Comic Fest that I've learned is just when you're hanging out with these people who, as a child, I called hero, mm -hmm. but now as an adult, I call them friend. <laughs> That just that to me is unreal. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's something that that uh, I was amazed by, even even going down there, because I, you know, anytime, I, and I think for anyone, anytime um, I go to a comic con or like I said, I went to the comic fest last year, and I had my mind, okay, you know, is this going to be like the San Diego Comic Con or what it's going to be like? And it was, I mean, it was like I said, it was amazing. You know, I went in there and it was it was laid back. You know, you could talk to the artists, you can talk to the people that were uh, different publishers and, uh, and you know, different, you know, obviously legends of the game. Um, they were easy to talk to. And uh, that's something that just amazed me uh, to where the, like I said, it was just flexible to go to different places, listen to um, what people were, were talking about. And, and I'm, uh, I'm very, and I pick and choose the guest list very carefully. Cause it's <laughs> like, I make sure that these people are, um, that they're, wonderful entertainers they're yeah. wonderful people that they're friendly and because you know sometimes we there's that experience where we where everybody has that like oh i just met this creator and he was not as nice to me as yeah. i hoped for and that's like kind of a a heartbreaking experience yeah. that some people have to go through trust me i've been through that way too many times <laughs> in my life. but i've befriended a lot of these creators and i know they can be that they are wonderful and they're great and they provide an interesting programming and when I'm at these panels like listening to these guys and I'm hanging on every word because trust me I'm a know-it-all I like to think I know everything <laughs> but then I come to Comic Fest and it's like wow it's like it, there's something new that I am learning and yeah. so that inspires me yeah awesome and, uh, it, and that's something you know I I'm if people don't you know for people that don't know me I'm I'm actually from the East Coast I'm from Tennessee but, um, and I, like I said, always been a comic book nerd. Uh, but I, the, the biggest thing that I noticed coming here uh, when I moved here uh, was, like I said, it's a, a, a real thriving comic book community um, here. You know, there's all kinds of creators, writers, uh, publishers, editors. I mean, it's just a real, uh, like I said, it's a tight knit community, but at the same time too, obviously, uh, you know, not everyone likes each other in the, in that community. But, um, but I was just amazed as far as just the, the amount of people, how, how passionate people are, um, and, about the comic book. And that's just something I've always, I've always thought is that San Diego has the best comic community of yeah. any city in the world. I, I believe but just, that. But yet, People think it just dries up when San Diego Comic Con leaves town. It's like no, it's it's here all year round. Yeah, we have IDW Publishing, we have Little Fish Comic Book yep. Studio, we have a thriving artist scene, we have self-published works, we have zine creators. There is so much. Oh yeah. In this city that goes on all times. Because trust me, I know I'm swamped with a with events nonstop. It's like <laughs> I can't break myself away from going to these events and cultivating this community. But San Diego Comic Fest allows me to just bring everything together. Some mm -hmm. people say, we think, wow, as chairman of San Diego Comic Fest, you've created an empire. It's like, I've created nothing. <laughs> I've simply just united everything. Yeah. This stuff is already here. All you gotta do is just bring it together. Yep. So for me, as a fan, and you know, gotten, we're, you know, dipping my toes in the professional side of things, I've always had the opportunity of like, you know, what if I were to put on a convention the way I wanted it? Mm -hmm. And of course, this is not you know the convention that I want, but it's just like, it's the dream of Mike Towery, who's the original founder of San Diego Comic Con. He founded okay. it when he was 15 years old, back in 1969. Wow. The California Golden State Comic Book Convention. <laughs> yeah, so that was what it was called, because they, San Diego is not a readily known city at the time, so it was called yeah. California Golden State, using the that allure to try to bring people in. <laughs> but, you know, I bring Mike, I help bring Mike's vision to life. Yeah. And, you know, he's got this, I, he had the idea for the small intimate convention. And of course, I mean, if he had idea for a you know big massive one that overtakes the town, I'd, you know, be operating on that scale. But of course, like San Diego Comic-Con versus San Diego comic Fest, we're operating on 1% of yeah. what San Diego Comic-Con does. Yeah. But I'm still incredibly passionate and still driven by all of this. And so each year, the convention just gets better and better. Mm -hmm. So in the 2012 convention, it's like, you know, you're taking your baby steps. 2013, still taking your baby steps. Yeah. Okay. Then year three, okay, you're learning to walk. And then year four, you start running. And it's like, that's when San Diego Comic Fest became the convention it needed to be. Yeah. But let's say like, you know what? Then I got appointed chairman. So, hey, let's pick up the pace. So year number five, 
when we did the centennial of Jack Kirby. Mm -hmm. People were coming up to me saying, like, do I go to the Jack Kirby centennial celebration or do I go to the 25th anniversary of the X-Men cartoon panel? There's too many good things going on. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty good problem to have. Yeah. There's too many good things going on at once because it provides us an opportunity to make sure that we make sure it's only the most entertaining program. We offer something for everyone and that everyone is informed, entertained. And, of course, last year when we got to the sixth San Diego Comic Fest, that's where the year where we were labeled online as America's Best Small Convention. Oh, wow. But that, it's a nice title, but it's not the one I want. Yeah. I want San Diego Comic Fest to be America's Best Convention. Yeah. And you do that by being nice to everyone, creating, creating a great entertaining environment, yeah. making sure that you know, your guests are wonderful and passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to bring that all together and make sure that you are responsive and engaging of your community. So yeah. I you know, make sure that every email is answered. I make sure that every Facebook you know, comment is addressed. I make sure that every store knows they are welcome. Every fan, every reader, no matter what you are into, if you're into anime, if you're into superheroes, there's different degrees of fandom. Everyone yeah. is welcome at our event. We want everyone here and we want everyone having a good time because I work my butt off as chairman during fest because everyone knows I just run around everywhere. I don't <laughs> sleep because one person having a bad time at this event is too much for me. Everyone is going to be entertained and having a blast. And I guarantee you will be talking about San Diego Comic Fest until the next one rolls around next year. Nice, nice. So uh, as, as far as with the fest, do you, uh, big picture, do you see it? Uh, I, I know it's, sometimes it can be hard to, to find that, that real thin balance between um, being, you know, obviously fan friendly, um, you know, having that, that personal touch and at the same time growing at the same time do you find that being a, a delicate balance there with it is a that? very delicate balance because you have to think about your growth yeah if you grow too much it can be it can have the wrong kind of effect on the convention yeah some people will say oh matt here's jim lee's email get in touch with him it's like I think Jim Lee is going to add too many people to our show. That's not the yeah. kind of growth I want. To I want to make sure that it's like, you know, that creators are accessible to yeah. talk to and not just overwhelmed with that sort of thing. Because I know that, like, some... It's just like, I'm a, I want to set the right tone yeah. for set accurate. But I'm very happy with the guest list that we have this year. And our guest of honor, Sergio Aragonis, the world's nice. greatest living cartoonist. There's not a... There's not anyone alive I know who does not like the work of Sergio Aragonis. He's so nice. He's so wonderful. And he's going to be celebrating his 60th year at Mad Magazine with us. Wow. And the fact that this man is still on top of his game and still friendly and so wonderful about meeting fans yeah. and still just a top-tier artist, I was just... I could not contain my own excitement when I called him up and he said yes to being a special guest. And then, of course, we also you know, catered to different niches. Yeah. We have a special Golden Age guest of honor, Mr. Alan Bellman, who has been drawing Captain America comics since 1942. Wow. Not a lot of Golden Age folks coming around. He's still happy to do <laughs> sketches for everyone. So if you want to meet a living legend, you know, come meet Mr. Alan Bellman. And for the science fiction side, our science fiction guest of honor, Mr. William Nolan, who co-wrote Logan's Run and more than oh, 2,000 wow. pieces of fiction in his career. He's in his 90s now and still writing. And because, like I said, we are comics, film, science fiction. We cater to everything. Yeah. We also have a dealer guest of honor, Mr. Bud Plant, who made it through 49 consecutive San Diego Comic Cons before finally bowing out. He's not doing it this year, but that's still a pretty <laughs> intense endeavor yeah. to be there <laughs> since the start. So he said, you know what? You will be our dealer guest of honor because guess what? Dealers are part of this ecosystem, yep. too. And we have Bill Shelley, our fan guest of honor, to talk about his fandom over the years. Because guess what? It's like comics guest of honor, science fiction guest of honor, it's like dealer guest of honor, mm -hmm. fan guest of honor. Fans make up our ecosystem. Dealers make up our ecosystem. Creators make up our ecosystem. Yeah. It's all about balance and bringing things together. So you have to have everything and know that everyone is celebrated in this convention. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, it's one of those where we, we tend to forget. I mean, even, you know, you see people see these comic books and you don't think about all the people involved to even make this product uh, run. I mean, like I said, like, like you were talking about. Yeah, you know, vendors just, are the backbone of this, yeah. uh, of this industry. <laughs> it's like they make the product accessible to all of us. Yep. Yep. Um, now, as far as personally for you, uh, what 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 artists or writers? What's uh, what influences you? What what sort of drives you? The you know even when you see 
um, you know, certain creators that you're obviously you're, you're fond of. What, uh, personally for you, what, what, what creators, you know, make you feel like I'm glad to do what I do? Well, I'm always glad to do what I do. <laughs> and the fact of, I think it's the people who inspired me during my youth. Mm -hmm. are the ones that make me most glad to do what I do. So one of the themes that I get to celebrate this year at San Diego Comic Fest is the 25th anniversary of the Spider-Man animated series, which nice. is still my all-time favorite cartoon. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And it blew my mind when I saw it first November 19th, 1994, yeah. with that definitive episode, Night of the Lizard. I simply just <laughs> I begged my mom to take me to the toy store and get me Spider-Man action figures, and then I just became the most insane addict of the show. And so... John Semper, who has been coming to the show for the past couple of years, is going to come out and do a very big celebration of 25 years of Spider-Man. So he's going to yeah. talk about, you know, the creation of the show, working on it. And he's even going to, we're even putting together a panel on the final two episodes, Spider Wars, which featured um, sp different Spider-Men from across the universe uniting to stop an evil threat, attempting to destroy all of reality. Does that sound like any movies that came out? Ah, sounds interesting. That sounds like something so that I've seen. Are, yeah, so we're going to talk about <laughs> true origins of the Spider-Verse. And no shade on Into the Spider-Verse. I thought it was the best film of last year, oh, yeah. but it definitely looked very familiar. So, <laughs> but getting to know John, who is a giant unto his own of this career. I mean, he was the first... He was the first black man to actually be a showrunner of animation yeah. after he was, I believe, was Fraggle Rock. Given, wow. And that was a job given to him by Jim Henson. Wow. So he's gotten to work with Jim Henson, George Lucas, and Stan Lee. You know, little name chomps over the years. Yeah, like, <laughs> little names. And, <laughs> and when you're at Comic Fest, you know, it's, you're just hanging out with, you know, him saying, it's like, well, I'm like, wow. It's like, you know, it's like talking with John. He's like, wow, you worked with Jim Henson, George Lucas, and, uh, and, and Stan Lee. And then, John, like, that's... Uh, it, that's like not, John's like, oh, that's nothing. He hails down uh, one of our cartoon legends. He hails down Floyd Norman. Hey, Floyd, you want to talk about the decade you spent working with Walt Disney? <laughs> and stuff like that will happen. Well, that's, uh, yeah, to, to be able to even work with names like that, you know, to have that on your resume, you know, yeah, he, uh, I, I work with, you know, Jim Henson. I work with, you know, Stan Lee and all these people, all these creators. Uh, that's mind boggling. Um, so, we're going to go down to, uh, uh, I wouldn't say the, the lightning round, but um, can you give me uh, your three best comic-related movies? My three best comic book-related movies. All yes. right, so let me think on that real quick. The number one comic-related movie that I have to go for is Spider-Man 2 by Sam Raimi. Okay. Yeah, with Toby. Yeah, Toby's my guy. I like Toby. <laughs> Toby's the man. I thought Spider-Man 2... It still stands the test of time for me because it took the high standard that was set by Spider-Man yeah. and it just absolutely elevated it even more. I'm a mega fan. One of the <laughs> things that Semper always taught me in the Spider-Man animated series was Spider-Man is a true hero because he solves problems without using his fists. And you, d you got to see that side of Peter come out. Yeah. And, of course... A new movie coming out into the fray. It's relatively new, but I have to throw it in the top three. Into the Spider Verse is definitely up there. Yep, I got that. Got so that up into there. the Spider Verse, you know, while yes, I did just criticize it for lifting its plot from a Spider Man, <laughs> uh, from a spider from the Spider Man cartoon, it is an amazingly solid movie, and yeah. it's, you know, I, I loved every second of it. That movie had that movie was so much better than it had any right to be. I went into a preview screening just because I'm like, eh, whatever. I had heard nothing about it. I'm not a fan of what Sony has done with yeah. the amazing Spider-Man films and Andrew Garfield and the solo Venom movie. Like, why are you doing Venom without Spider-Man? He's a revenge-motivated character. <laughs> but I just said, okay, I'll watch this. I'll watch this trash. And I just was like, what? That was so good. Yeah. Because you had a very emotional storyline with Miles. Yeah. You saw a broken Spider-Man with, with Peter B. Parker mm -hmm. and him earning his own redemption. You had comedic effect characters along the way. I'm, yeah, I mean, like, you know, Spider-Man Noir and Spider-Ham and Penny, they were actually, you know, more comedic <laughs> effect characters than anything. And Gwen, you know, could hold her own as, and not just be a sidekick Spider-Man, but it was just a really phenomenal film. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I laughed, I cried, I had, like, it had the ups and downs, but then it showed the... It showed that heroism always prevails, yeah. and villainy 
no matter how many times you try it, it always comes back to bite you. Yeah. I just thought it was a perfect movie. And I think it really benefits, for the most part, under the direction of Phil Lord, who, I mean, I didn't even know he was the director of it at first, but like for anyone who had seen the Lego movie, that is the most entertaining movie I've ever watched in my entire life. It does not slow off. down at any moment. <laughs> yeah. It's always entertaining. And so Spider-Verse was like that too. And if I had to pick a third movie to throw in there, I'd say I'd give the bronze to the Joss Whedon Avengers movie. Now, I often have a problem with superhero team stories because team stories, they become about big villain fights and not character development. Uh, yeah. And so like, I like character development and characters progressing from something small into something big yeah. and to really see the change. But here you saw a movie that had great character development and great storytelling. And in fact, it's like you sit down for it and it's like, blink, it's over. You, you don't even realize you just watched a three-hour movie because it <laughs> captures you like that. Yeah. <laughs> so those are his top three there. Uh, definitely putting in Spider-Verse. That was an awesome movie. I will watch that again. Uh, and then the last um, last couple of questions is, uh, what's one creative tip that uh, you can give our audience? Don't be afraid to fail. You're going to fail at first. Hold on. I was trying to say that with a coffee ground stuck on my tongue. <laughs> So yeah, I just failed on camera right there, so yeah. don't think like It's how you recover from that. And even if you like nearly choke on coffee grounds and stuff like that, you're going to fail, you're going to embarrass yourself, you're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. The most important thing is learn from your mistakes and learn from them. And I know so many artists that I've worked with in comics over the years, they cannot l go back and look at their old stuff, say like, ah, I was so sloppy back then. But guess what, this was your foundation. Yeah. This is how you learn to make the mistakes so you could learn to correct them and how to improve things along the way. So the most important thing is just do it. Yeah. You can just sit around talking about saying you're gonna do it, but Oh yeah, take it, take it into action. <laughs> a decade ago I said, I'm, I wanna be a comic editor. And then I said, well, actually, no, I want to be the next great comic book historian. And now I'm, I've kind of moved past those things into the role of convention organizer. It's like, it's not, I, I, I was trying to go down different paths, but I ended up going down another one that I actually ended up much more well suited for. Yeah. And I just like being that guy who helps the community. I'd like yeah. to learn those lessons and those failures that I had along the way to help encourage everyone succeed because a rising tide lifts all ships. Oh yeah. We're all in this, we're all geeks together. I do this because I love comics and I love yeah. this community and I just want everyone to have a great time with it. Nice. Nice. And then where can uh, people, uh, if people are wanting to find information on the uh, Comic Fest, um, the San Diego Comic, uh, Comic Fest, where can they reach uh, either you or where can they contact um, or get information about the Comic Fest? Okay, so first things first, uh, check us out at San Di the San Diego Comic Fest website. So it's www.sdcomicfest.org, .org, not .com. Um, you can also check us out on Facebook at San Diego Comic Fest, F-E-S-T, Instagram and Twitter at SD Comic Fest. And you can just check me out on Facebook. It's just Matt Dunford, M-A-T-T-D-U-N-F-O-R-D. And if you have any questions for me, comments, just want to talk comics, Pokemon, King of the Hill, nerdy stuff, like that's that's what I'm here for. Yep. <laughs> nice. Well, we got Matt here uh, with another great uh, episode of the Creative Brew. Uh, if you're in the area, please go down there. Uh, it's, uh, what the, is it March? March 7th through the 10th. Yes. So we're a Thursday um, through uh, Thursday through Sunday show. All right. I will definitely be down there. I'll be down there learning, be down there uh, checking out all the artists, checking out all the creators, um, going to panels. Uh, it is an awesome uh, uh, convention. Uh, if you ever get a chance to uh, check it out, it's, like I said, fan friendly, laid back. Uh, you'll meet a lot of the interesting people. So uh, once again, uh, this is another great episode of the Creator Brew here at Panels Common Book and Coffee Bar here. Uh, it's on Mission Avenue. Uh, please come check them out. And once again, be creative, stay inspired. Yeah. Keep reading comics and drinking coffee. Yep. <laughs>